you know, like most sickness, it started off as something that was just insignificant in my life. And I didn't think anything of it. I was born again, spirit filled, tongue talking, uh, ministered to many other people. And uh, so when, when this came upon me as just a little small sore and it stuck with me for a while, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, you know, it's going to go away. But you, you know, all of you that have had a sickness are probably here. Uh, after it hangs on for a while, it starts affecting your, how you're thinking, <laughs> you know. And so I went from, you know, thinking no problem to, you know, wanting to get prayer. And so I went to what I considered was one of the big guns, my pastor, who had seen many miracles. And um, when he prayed for me, it's like I let it go. And then, you know, another year passes, two years pass. And, um, and then it was my pastor who encouraged me to go and get it diagnosed. And uh, when I heard the word cancer, it really changed the whole picture. You know, I was thinking, you know, flesh-eating virus, leprosy, I can deal with that. <laughs> but when I heard cancer, it just something, because all my experience with cancer, you know, family members, you know, they'd all start off with, uh, you know, the diagnosis, then the surgery, then the radiation, then the chemo, and then the formaldehyde. You know, every, <laughs> everyone that I knew, that was the, that was the route they went. And so, like seven and a half years into the journey, you know, I was trying everything I knew. Um, you know, I was in the Word, I was commanding, I was rebuking, um, you know, praying. Uh, I did everything that, you know, we're supposed to do, right? Uh, but uh, it was all my effort. Everything, like, I was kind of raised Word of faith, and so... Um, you know, I kept thinking I needed a bigger crowbar to move God, you know, that's, that's how I pictured the word. And, and my faith really wasn't confidence in God. My faith was in uh, moving God through what I knew, my performance, my ability. And, and so at the end of seven and a half years, I just, you know, I just gave up. Uh, you know, I turned to Caroline and I said, you know, and I was trying herbs and all that along the way, nutrition. I was probably the healthiest sick person uh, in all of Tucson. You know now, what I had mean? Had that thing been growing? I mean... Oh, yeah. It, it thrives on health food, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was just growing gangbusters. I'm like, wait a minute, you know? And, and all the while, my life is just being sucked out of me. And, and you can imagine the disconnect in your mind. Like here I'm thinking, you know, I've seen miracles, I've prayed for people, I've experienced miracles, but yet, you know, nothing's happening with me. So, you know, at the end of seven and a half years, I just, one day I just told Carol and I give up. I'm not, I'm not uh, doing this health food thing anymore. It's over with. I tried to think of the worst thing that I could eat uh, to, you know, like just kick this idea out of me. And I thought of a fish sandwich from McDonald's. <laughs> Like that might and just that's when your healing away. turned exactly around, huh? that's what happened. <laughs> no, so, it was just I got I just took my focus off of what I needed to do, and like you were sharing last night, you know, you're never going to see what God has for you till you get to the end of your own thinking. Amen. Amen. Mike, can you explain for those that maybe don't know your story? You know, you started off with a little growth. But just talk about, you know, you talk about the seven and a half years. Can you just share, like, how big it got? Because this was an outward growth on his chest. It wasn't inward. It was outward. And so you could see it. You were doctoring this every day, she was my cleaning mom. it. You talked about the smell of it. It was like, it, it was really terrible. was. Yeah. You were, were dying on the outside. And if our AVL can come up with those pictures, just put them up whenever you get them. They have two pictures, they said. Yeah. I see Matt waving, so that's awesome. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's just started off as a little sore. Like I said, I didn't think, think anything of it. There it is. There it is. You know, that's, that's the manifestation of, in my mind, that's the manifestation of performance right there. See, that's what I was trying to do to receive my healing. I was not trusting in God. If you boiled it down, what was left in the pot was I was trying to move God 
through what I knew, what I could say, what I could command, what I, you know, all, everything. And, um, but, you know, it started off something small and it's like, you know, it's like a bad idea. If you let it linger inside of your mind, it just becomes, you know, it just overtakes you. So it went just progressively, uh, got to this size until I was like, you know, it started like growing out these tentacles and as it's getting bigger, my life is, you know, I'm getting weaker and weaker. And um, I, I want to share this though, that, you know, even though that, you know, the smell, it's like having, how many of you have smelled rotting flesh? Yeah. And it was right here. It's like, I could not get away from that stench. And it's like, um, you know, and I can't remember the scripture, you will, where, you know, uh, our father's talking about the Israelites, that their works and performance were a stench yeah. in his nostrils. Psalms chapter 50. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm like, I'm like seeing, you know, once I quit everything, my, my eyes were open to see, hey, wait a minute. And God immediately pointed me back to his word. It's like, I've been trying to do all these things to get something that he says I already have. And uh, so I just went back to the word and, and I, I had to do this. I had to make this decision that, you know, I, I had a lot of understanding from the word. I, I was in the word all the time. Um, you know, I could quote scriptures, but I had to get to the place where it was like, I wouldn't lay aside the word, but I, w I was willing to lay aside what I thought the word of God said. And so I went back and I just got into the word and I said, now I'm going to see again what Jesus did for me. And that started, that whole process started by one scripture, Matthew 21, verse 22. I was just reading it one day, uh, you know, after that seven and a half years. And I said, and the scripture says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believing you receive. And, you know, I was just honest in my heart and I, and I read it backwards. Like in my mind, I read it backwards. Like if you have received, you have believed. And I just, you know, it was like, you have to understand when, when you're, all your confidence is in what you're doing and your faith to acknowledge that you're not believing is like, I mean, it was like, for me, it was like, you know, the lights were gonna turn off and, you know, I was gonna fall, drop dead. So in that moment, that's what the enemy tells you. It's all up to you and you cannot fail because if you fail, it's game over. And so in that moment, when I read that, it says, if you have received, you have believed. I just acknowledged, I said, you know what? I have not received. I haven't received the healing what, what Christ has provided for me, which means I have not believed. Wow, that was tough. But you know what was beautiful? I want you to catch this. I never felt closer to my father than I did in that moment. And I was in total unbelief, you know, about my healing. But you came to honesty. Oh my goodness. You weren't faking it anymore. No, I wasn't. But this is the scripture the Lord brought to my mind. Uh, John 8, 32, you shall know the truth yeah. and the truth will make you free. And in that moment now, I was free to believe something different than I had been believing. But up until that point, I was stuck to my doctrine like a bulldog with a bone. You know, I would not let go of it because yeah, I'm, I'm like trusting in what I can do to be healed instead of what Christ already did for me. Well, you've preached a sermon, right? Amen. Well, Carolyn, you know, we have a, a, a lot of people here that, you know, they're caregivers. And I think that's one of the things Butch and Julianne had talked about uh, when they ministered the other day. So what was your journey as a caregiver? You're seeing your husband, you're seeing this growth, you're taking care of it. Um, but what was your process with the Lord and what you were standing with him for? Yeah, it was, uh, it was difficult. However, right from the get-go, because we believed in healing, we had all the Hagen, Kenyan books, and you know, had seen healings before, um, I knew that he was gonna be healed. But um, 
as it got worse and worse and we're wondering what's going on, um, I just, at that point, I really just had to turn him over to the Lord and I needed to cast the care of it all onto the Lord. It wasn't my burden to carry it. So um, I, I, don't, I can't say that I had fear. I don't ever remember having fear about it, but um, it was just like this was something I needed to deal with every day and helping bandage and dress it and, you know, help him with whatever he was needing. But um, casting the care of it onto the Lord was, I think, a key thing. It, didn't, it wasn't my burden to carry. You know, can I add something to that? And you know, it freed her to be truthful with me. I mean, I remember one night, I'm like, I'm laying, you know, we couldn't sleep in the same bed, the smell and me not being so restless. But anyway, I'm out on the couch and I'm like, uh, you know, my heart was like, at that time, my heart, resting heart weight was like 120, wow. you know, just sitting there. Wow. And I'm laying on the couch and all of a sudden, I went from like 120 to like 10 and then back to 120 and and I'm laying there and I'm like what's you know it you can't imagine what that feels like unless it's happened to you you know and so um she just came out I guess it was the Lord that brought her out there and she's just checking on me and she sits down I said man I don't know what's going on and uh, she just encouraged me she said you know Mike she said here's what I can do she said, I can call 911, but we know what's going to happen. You know, they're going to come out and they're going to tell you all this bad news and uh, it's going to just sow doubt into your heart. She said, or we can just continue to trust God. Now that, That's a great wife. Oh my goodness, Praise yeah. Praise the Lord. I, I knew what he was going to say, but I wanted to give him the choice that he would make that decision because it, it was just kind of like, should I go to the hospital and like... Mike, I can call 91 or I can take you to the hospital, but that's not your answer. And what do you want to do? You know, you're going to trust God or the medical. Field. So let me ask you, uh, I know people will be wondering, why didn't you go to the doctor and get this thing taken off? Well, there's no guarantee. If you just remove the fruit off the tree and you leave the tree in the ground, what's going to happen next year? See, I understood that there was a root to the sickness and disease that went beyond what was in my physical body. Well, that's really good. That's what I was preaching the first uh, service here was that things are not just physical. Amen. And really last night too, yeah. if you can receive it. Yeah. Amen. Because Peter went on to say in the next verse, verses, he said, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary sickness. No, he didn't say that. Mm -hmm. He said the devil. That's really good. Amen. And then he gave us the solution Amen. in the next verse. You know what? I think that Matt was able to put a picture of my brother and a picture of Mike up oh, let's here. see this. I want you to see this. Have they got them together? There's Mike. There's my brother. He does look like me. He does. Or maybe you look like him. But that, that's amazing how much they remind me of each other. He just took that last night, sent it to me. So I'm sorry, I just wanted to put that up there. I understand. And so you, you even mentioned that this thing got so big, you actually had to get a bra and oh, wear yeah. a bra to carry that thing. Yeah. I mean, it's really embarrassing when, when you're wearing, when your cup size is bigger than your wife's. <laughs> I that have, was what was humiliating. <laughs> Not that he had That's to wear it. That's embarrassing for your wife, yeah. too. Can, can you imagine her going in the store and she's saying, I need like a 38D. And, yeah. they're, and they're looking at her like, for who? My husband. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get in an interview, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. No, so um, this, this process of just what about the people around you in your life? You know, we've been talking about this throughout the, the conference. As, as you're standing, as you're getting revelation, it's the people around you. Praise God, your wife was just amazing standing with you. But what about the other people in your life and, and, and how did you mitigate some of those things? You know, never um, told them. 
What's that? We never told any of yeah, the Yeah, we didn't tell family because I, I knew where their hearts were at. But, but I'll tell you that probably the most difficult group to deal with were my Christian brothers and sisters in Christ. They were all, this is what I've discovered about people, is all the advice that they're giving you is what they think they would do if they were in that problem. It's very rare that someone will just tell you the truth like my wife, you know? So, you know, and we're in a very legalistic church and, you know, there's rules you have to follow. And so everyone was just pointing out everything they thought was a sin in my life. You know, it was, it was rough. In fact, one service, uh, the pastor called me up in front of the group and I sat on this chair and everybody told me what was the problem. Everything that was wrong. Everything was wrong with me. I mean, I repented of things I wouldn't even think of doing, but because they said I did it, you know, I'm like, well, maybe this is the answer, you know? Yeah, we were desperate at that point, but that was the hardest thing for me uh, towards the end of the journey really was the, the fellowship that we were in and they were all saying, Mike, you're not healed because you're sinning, you're sinning, you're, you know, you're going against the pastor or you're this or that. I knew Mark's, Mike's heart and I knew that none of that was true. And I'm just like cringing inside, like, no, that's not right, but we don't know what the answer is, but you know, so that was the difficult part. Yeah. And you know, that's something that uh, can happen if you don't guard your heart is that if, you, if you're evaluating uh, your healing by what you're seeing or feeling in your body, it's going to open your heart to things that you shouldn't even entertain. Because again, you're trying to find the solution instead of, like you were teaching last night, instead of just casting that care and, you know, letting it go and just being confident and trusting that God is the one who will show you where you're otherwise minded than he is. So what happened? Did you die? <laughs> Just like in that play last night. That's, died to your I, own self-righteousness. Yes, I did, yes, indeed. Yeah, I did. Um, like I was sharing a moment ago, when I got to the end of myself, this is the scripture that came to my mind in that moment where I'm realizing, wow, I'm not believing, was... Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 2, where Paul said, I've determined not to know anything among anyone save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And just a tip for all of you, if God ministers a scripture that you think you know, you probably don't know it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so yeah, yeah. I said, and in that moment, I realized what he was telling me, that my focus was not on Jesus Christ and him crucified. It was on me. And so that just redirected me in what, like, what was it, three or four months, I, I started ministering to her saying, Caroline, I'm healed. And you got to remember, I would call her because she's at work and I'm in the word and I, I would see something and I'd get all excited and, and I'd call her up and say, honey, this is it. I'm healed. And then she'd come home and she'd find this guy laying on the couch like... <laughs> She goes, hey, where's that healed guy that called me earlier? <laughs> so she's coming home now from, from work after this, you know, I had this change of heart. And I'm beginning to see in the word a perspective that I never considered that Jesus had done it all, that it was already done. Uh, you know, we all talk about our sins are forgiven, but I never made the connection, although I quoted 1 Peter 2.24 at least a million times, uh, I never made the connection that if the first part of that verse is true, who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that the second part has to be true also, by whose stripes you were healed. So this is beginning to come alive in my heart to the point where we had a discussion one day and I said, honey, I don't know why these symptoms are still here because I am healed. Amen. Totally different than before where it was like, I'm healed and then, is it still there? Do I feel anything? You know what I mean? Anybody relate to that? Yes. Look, every hand went up. No, just kidding. <laughs> 
So Caroline, how were you when he was so confident he was healed, but there was no physical evidence? How, how were you? Were you as confident as he was? Or you just No, I mean, after, you know, the million times that he says that every day, several times or whatever, I'm just kind of like, okay, great, yeah. <laughs> you know, Lord, you know what's going on. <laughs> I don't. But anyway, so it just, it was just that whole process of going on. But again, because we didn't really understand the fullness of that we already have it. And Mike finally got hold of that truth. And uh, I was sharing, uh, because a friend had given us the CD of You've Already Got It. And I listened to it when I was at work on breaks and stuff. And I came home and I told Mike, you should listen to it, because you're saying the same thing now that is on this CD. And so Mike finally listened to it. And, uh, but we had asked the Lord when he said that I, I know that I'm healed. He had finally gotten that turning point in his heart. Um, he, we said, okay, well, if you are healed, then why are the symptoms still there? And we said, well, let's just ask the Lord, you know, if there's something that we're missing, let's ask him. So we prayed about it or whatever. And then just like a few days later, a friend called, a real close mentor friend in the Lord, called saying he had a dream and wanted to share it with Mike. And uh, we thought, well, maybe this is, you know, the Lord showing us what the missing link is, so to speak. So he came over and uh, shared this dream. But in the dream, um, it showed that Mike had to do one more thing and then he'd be healed. And so I'm thinking, okay, this is it. You know, this is the one more thing you need to do. I'm thinking that in my heart. And Mike's thinking, I don't have to do a bleepity bleep thing. I'm, I'm healed. And so That's right. we, we And that was a turning point yes. when you quit having to do something and you just exactly. trust what was already yeah. done. Yeah. I call it going all in. Yeah. You know, if, if you're in a poker game and you have the... Uh, best hand. Now, do you know this by uh, experience? No, this is, this yeah. is all theoretical. Andrew doesn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right. No, but if, 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 you have the, if you have a perfect hand, you're not going to even leave bus fare in your pocket. You're going to put it all on the table. <laughs> Amen. 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 You know you're going to win. So when did you start to see the difference? Like, this is happening in your heart, and, but you weren't looking to see if it had changed. But when did... Physically, you start to see those changes. Yeah, you know, uh, after, during, in that dream, uh, after that dream, uh, something clicked in my heart to where uh, I call him Big Mike. I met Big Mike, and I didn't realize that inside of me uh, was this spiritual man that was established in Christ that didn't take, you know, it from anybody. And so I... I like stood up on the inside and uh, against the devil because I realized the lie that I had been fighting since my youth was performing uh, to receive uh, from anyone in authority and God now was the one in authority. So I broke that and when I walked out of that room that day, I was free because the enemy had no more place in my heart. This came out of my mouth. When, when, I, when she came into that room, I said, I told her, I said, honey, I don't have to do a bleep and bleep bleep thing. And I said, and I you don't. You didn't have... use those words. You, you were mad. Yeah. You actually well, said. What do you think I said? Well, I think I know what you said. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say it. <laughs> bleep and bleep is okay for here. Okay. That's just fine. <laughs> you know, you can cuss the devil out. I think yeah. that's just great. Yeah. But this came out of my mouth, and this showed me what I had been believing. I said, Caroline, I don't have to serve God another day in my life, and I'm healed. Amen. See, that's how I knew that the spirit in me of the enemy, the lie was that I was performing to get God to heal me. Wow, that's, that's amazing. And, that's amazing. you know, when I walked out of that room, I was free. And you know what? I just like said, I'm free to live my life as a healed person. Right. Now I still had the, all the symptoms, but it was like inside when that, when belief replaces unbelief, there is a strength that takes you beyond your physical ability where it's like you might be hurting, feeling bad, smelling like you died three days ago, but... <laughs> 
It's like you, you see beyond that. It's like yeah. I got a revelation of what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4.18 where he said, we look not at the things that we can see, but we look at the things we cannot see. I used to wonder, how do you look at something you can't see? <laughs> and then, then I understood it's through the spirit that we see. This is exactly things. what Barry was teaching. Yes. Amen. Man, that Amen. You, you saw it on the inside. And once you see it on the out, inside, yes. you're going to see it on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. So Amen. we've just got a few seconds left. But how long from the time that you really got that confidence until you saw the thing completely gone? Yeah. And then I also want you to share with them about uh, what you're doing now because you've got a ministry. People might want to be partakers of what you're doing. Amen. It took about uh, six or seven months uh, for the tumor to just melt away, so to speak. It didn't fall off in chunks, didn't drop off the next day or anything, but it was a, just a process of the body just recovering and that tumor just uh, disappearing. Mm -hmm. So I'll have his little you know, scar right here and that's it. So your church people in church, what did they start to see? Or how did well, they respond? Actually, um, we stopped going to that church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like, yeah. Oh, man. No, the pastor did uh, pass away himself um, probably a month before you received your healing. And the church kind of fell apart anyway. Yeah. I mean, some were believing he was going to raise up and be the second Jesus or something, you know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, right. So the church was kind of scattered at that point anyway. Right, so yeah. So we, we just moved on, you know, and uh, what so am I doing? So you came now? here and you worked for me for how many years? Seven years. Seven years answering the phones and, and Caroline still works with us. Yes, yeah, she does. I'll tell you just for all of you that might want to come to Karis, is that, you know, my experience in the phone center I think I learned as much or more through that experience yep. than just, you know, sitting in the classroom. Amen. Because you get an opportunity to, you're limited because you can't see, you can't, any of your senses but hearing when you're on the phone. So it really gave me an opportunity to focus in on listening to what the Spirit of God would have me minister. And so that was a blessing. I mean, that was like, my, my highlight of the time. All right, here. so you are a minister now. I've heard you minister. You're powerful. Of course, they've heard you minister today. And uh, if somebody wanted you to come to their church, you've traveled to different countries. Yes, you yes. minister. Mm -hmm. So tell yeah. them what you're doing, how they get in touch with you. You can get in touch with me through MikeHeshMinistries.com. I have a, on the, on the contact on the page, you can uh, reach out to me through that. And um, I, I can't... Uh, I can't get off this stage or Juliana kill me without saying, uh, uh, talk about healing journeys today. You know, uh, I know we're down to double zeros, but you know when- But when, you're a preacher, so that doesn't mean a thing. No, I wanna be respectful. So um, in my third year of Karis, I did ministry school. And um, my project was, you know, we all had to submit a project and they, one of our, we got picked as one of the projects. And the project that I came up with, the title of it was, I think it called Healing School Connect. And my vision was that I would be taking uh, the message of healing to people through doing conferences, okay? And so uh, like a year after Julianne and Butch had started Healing Journeys Today, they invited me and, and as, as I was, you know, going to these conferences and then we, then we went online because of COVID. So we got on YouTube and Facebook and it was like one day the Lord said, this is what I had in mind for Healing School Connect. So that's really what we do on Healing Journeys today is we preach this healing message that's being shared here, you know, seven days a week, live teaching. And it's just like, it's like I had a vision of what it would look like, but God said, no, this is what it looks like. And so I'm able to minister uh, on that platform and we do conferences. We're doing one in Minnesota in September. We're going to Europe next year. And it's just been awesome. So Healing Journeys today, uh, you can go, they have a YouTube channel and a Facebook channel, but there's just all of us who have received through 
connecting through. And if I'm not mistaken, every one of the people that do those are so part of our healing journeys. journeys. Yeah. They, they are actually yeah. people that we have videos yeah. on, so it's great. Just real people like you that have gone through uh, a challenge, a healing challenge, and have met the truth to where it's changed your life. Amen. Amen. So for anybody uh, who's watching here or even online, I can verify that Mike is just a powerful minister and he goes beyond just it's God's will to be well to telling you about these struggles and how you sort out that legalistic thing, trusting in yourself instead of trusting in God. And he's a super effective minister. Thank you. So man, I'm glad that you're alive and that you're here testifying. Me today. too. We love you, brother. We love you too. That's awesome. Let's give God some praise for that. Amen. Man, I tell you, that is, uh, some of you are dealing with cancer, but there's nobody who's got cancer that looks as bad as what he went through. And so this ought to give you some hope. Amen. Right here is a walking miracle. <laughs> Say again. Oh, face swapped. What does that mean? My brother and, and Mike. All right, so put up this. And, and so that's Mike's face on my brother's body. You know, thanks to our AVL people for everything they do. Aren't they awesome? Thank you, Matt. That's a real blessing.